The new cooler Don Hung has arrived, and he's confirmed just one thing. With alternate versions of already playable characters, Honkai Star Rail is like Honkai Impact 3rd, meaning we will also all end up sobbing our eyes out in about five more patches. <laughs> Donathan Hung is also Hoyoverse's way of politely turning you on, because after Kafka, we could all use something a little more subtle. This man both opens the floodgates and parts the seas. Today, I'm going to be going over the new imaginary Daniel Hung. And don't worry, he's also very real. No, he's just imaginary element. If you enjoy videos like this, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing. We're only 98,274 subscribers away from 300k and I'm pretty sure we can get there by like tomorrow. With all that being said, let's talk about Don Hung. Right after I read this ad. This video is sponsored by Guild Wars 2, a free to start MMORPG. The most off-putting part of MMOs for a lot of people is the grind. Games aren't fun if the gameplay isn't top notch and in your sea of live service games that all require you to be online every weekday at 2pm to complete your arbitrary daily missions for a crumb of premium currency, Guild Wars 2 stands out as an actually gameplay focused RPG and it's a ton of fun. Create your own story with quest lines that evolve from your own choices at the beginning of the game. One of my favorite parts of Guild Wars 2 is actually the combat, which feels super dynamic and also carries over into their optional PvP, which is my favorite of any MMO I've played. Guild Wars 2's exploration is also fantastic with flying mounts and a ton of open world to explore. Secrets of the Obscure is the newest expansion that just released, and it offers even more combat flexibility as well as a new expansion model that releases consistent content across quarters of the year. Click the link in the description to purchase Secrets of the Obscure now to begin or continue your journey and join me and hundreds of thousands of players in one of the healthiest and diverse communities in gaming. I look forward to seeing you guys in Guild Wars 2. Danny Hung is a tank, not because he has a decent health pool, but because he hits like a K2 Black Panther. He has a skill that enhances his basic attack, but absorbs skill points to use. His basic attack deals low damage without enhancements, okay damage with one point, pretty solid damage with two points, and absolutely decimates planets with three. He also gets a pretty big crit damage buff whenever using two or three skill points, because for every hit starting at four, he'll get one stack of crit damage that lasts until the end of his turn. And the more skill points you use, the more hits he gonna do. When you play him, you're gonna want to use max skill points almost every single time, or every time if possible. But with that said, if you don't have perfect teams, then you may need to use less skill points in a turn every now and then just to make sure that you can actually play the video game. You need to live. This dude eats a ton of skill points, and that means your team building is going to matter a lot to max his damage output. But his ultimate helps a bit because after using it, you gain two stacks of Sugma Synchro Santa, which can substitute for skill points. Kwama Sacrilege City caps out at three, but you'll basically never Never hit that unless you stop spending all your money on DoorDash and get E2. Oh, and also, his ultimate does a lot of damage. I feel like that's probably pretty important to include. His ultimate also costs 140, which is actually absurdly high. But every time you enhance your basic attack, you're actually getting more energy out of it, with one point giving 30, two points giving 35, and three points giving 40. By using his enhanced basic, you're dealing more hits of damage, seeing the best animation in the game, and activating his talent, which gives him a stack of damage bonus every single hit he deals on a turn up to a max of six stacks. The main thing to remember about this is that if you can get his ultimate at the end of an attack, make sure to use it before his turn actually ends so that way you can keep the damage bonus on it. His traces are pretty nuts as well. One of them gives 24 crit damage, that is crit damage, not crit rate, I don't know why that's written up there, against enemies that are weak to imaginary damage. And by playing him with Silver Wolf, you can have that for absolutely free. His other passive gives him crowd control resistance, and the third one gives him 15 energy at the start of combat. His technique outside of battle gives him a stack of Santa Scramble number two, so I guess you actually can't keep spending on DoorDash. When you end up leveling his talents, it's important to remember that you are loved and that someone cares very much about you. It's me. I do that. Focus on his basic attacks for the highest portion of his damage, then his ultimate and talent together, and then his skill. Cooler Don Hung is basically the Star Rail equivalent of Exodia. Once you have him, you win the game. But you need all five pieces to make him work, and that includes relics, light cones, and teams, so let's talk about relics next. Dunhung is absurdly hard to build if you're bad at reading, sleep deprived, or a tower of fantasy player. But I'm gonna break it all down so you can get some crazy damage out of him. To be clear, Genji is a high investment character because you have to invest in your team, not necessarily invest in him. You'll need to give him some good gear, but to be able to manage his skill points, at least at release, you'll need to make your team fast and him slow, unless you're using another very specific team. I'll talk about his teammates in the team section, but for him you want to run Wastelander of Bandit Street Desert, which gives imaginary damage for the two-piece and a pretty massive crit bonus 
for the four piece. If you play the other Hoyaverse game that's underwater now, this set is Blizzard Strayer. When enemies are imprisoned, you have bonus crit stats against them. You can also run two piece Wild Wheat with this set for attack, or even four piece for some basic attack damage bonus, but I recommend Wastelander more since it has the highest damage potential. For planar sets, you basically want Rudolin Arena and that's it. If you play speed boots or hop over 120 speed, space healing station can be pretty good as well, but for what I'm gonna recommend, Rudolin Arena is way too hard to beat. Crit rate and basic attack damage bonus are crazy. For main stats, you want to run a crit damage body, attack percent boots, imaginary damage sphere, and an attack percent rope. Between the Wastelander set for 10%, Rudolin Arena for 8%, base 5%, and his minor traces for 12% crit rate, you already have 35% crit rate for free without light cone. So most of the time you want a crit damage body after other bonuses. But with that said, crit rate can also be pretty usable. Either way, you just want to make sure that you're over 70% total and under 90% crit rate. Unless you're not using 4-piece Wastelander, then you can go to 100. For boots, I found that I like playing him with attack percent boots because I speed tune him in a very specific way and he hits pretty hard. But speed can be okay depending on the team. Both are good overall, but generally I recommend attack more because he eats a lot of skill points and a lower speed allows you to generate more skill points from your fast supports before his next attack. Imaginary Sphere is best, but attack percent is decent and honestly not too much worse with good substats. And for rope, attack percent always gets you higher damage overall, even with the extra ultimates. And the ER rope also accounts for the extra skill points you're effectively getting from it. I'll go into more detail on team builds later on, but here's a summary of my Donhung build. Keep in mind, if we see other relic sets or characters come to the game in the future, this can change, but this is my build. My theory crafter friend who did a lot of stuff for this video is dyslexic. So when I messaged him that I was in Daniel, he thought I said I was in denial. And that's also true because I really can't believe that you have actually decent free to play options for this character. But I also can't believe they released a light cone for him that feels so busted. Dunhung's signature light cone is pretty insane on him because it opens up entirely new play styles, increases his damage output by a ton, and looks really good. The energy regen from it is really solid. And in some teams, it can actually make a massive difference in just overall playability. That doesn't mean you need it, but I will say from experience, he felt a lot better with his signature light cone. But don't spend money on this game. Edgy light cone is pretty solid too, and that's going to be his next best option overall. But there's no need to get it for him, because on the fall of an Aeon is the next best thing at S5, and since it's free, it's, uh free. Nowhere to run at S5 is a decent option for him, but honestly, we're not even far enough into the game to have S5, and it's just barely better than S1 something irreplaceable. A Secret Vow is also pretty strong, and the moles welcome you should be your worst case scenario. The way I see it, you either go broke for Brighter Than The Sun, or ask the weird puppet lady for a freebie and max it out. As always, here's a light cone ranking and chart so you can compare the damage. Take it with a pretty big grain of salt since everything is simulated, but it's a good general look at each light cone's power level on it. Personally, I do feel that Donhung is a pretty free-to-play friendly unit with high investment just due to fall of an Aeon being so strong on him and his team requirements, but he's made much easier by spending. I'm sorry in advance for the team section you're about to watch because there is going to be a lot of information in there, but it is good information if this is your favorite character because there's a lot of ways to play him. Super Saiyan Cold Dragon Young teams are flexible if you don't care about doing damage. Realistically, there are lots of supports you can play with Donhung if you're willing to sacrifice your level 3 enhanced basic attack to save skill points, but that's basically always going to be lower damage than using supports that can break you even. But regardless, I want to give you a general idea of who you can play with, and then I'll give you a couple optimized options. Generally speaking, because he's so saturated with attack and damage bonus, defense shredders are amazing to play with him. The obvious choice for that is Silver Wolf, since you can gain imaginary weakness on enemies while also shredding defense. You can also play them with Fox Mother and Locha to make sure that your team always has a chance to break. Despite Yukong feeling pretty bad to play without E6, you still can make her work without it. Alternatively though, you can play a team with Pela, which is a really good free-to-play friendly option since she's a four-star that has AoE defense shred, and Danny has AoE damage that gets extra value with Pela's kit. Alongside Pela, you can also play Tingyun, and she has an exciting twist. She'll give you some attack buffs and skill point generation, but she also 
can help you save extra skill points because her ultimate gives the buffed character energy, which will let you ult more often on Don Hunk. For basically all of Don Hunk's teams, the preservation and abundance characters don't really matter much as long as the element fits the fight and they don't consume a lot of skill points. That's why Locha is so powerful. Sometimes I also like to combine Pela and Silver Wolf for extra high defense shred, and this team is especially good if you're using Ting Yun and other teams with other carries. Basically, if you have limited resources, this one's pretty solid. <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to give a shout out to my boy Welt because in this setup, he actually doesn't need to use a ton of skill points. You just want his ultimate. The relic set you use on Don Hung for crit rate and damage on imprisoned enemies can actually activate with Welt's in prison from ultimate, and he can help enable Dragon Man to do big imaginary damage. I believe Don Hung will work extremely well with Fushuan and Lynx, but we don't have them yet, so you know. Here's where it all gets complicated though. I mentioned earlier in the video that Don Hung wants to be slow and his team's fast. Well, that's how I play him, and it's honestly pretty broken. I like to call him a destruction unit that destroys your team's damage in exchange for being able to destroy enemies, but it requires a lot of speed. Every single one of my supports on these Don Hung teams has at least 147 speed or higher in order to generate enough skill points to make Don Hung able to use three skill points every turn. It's how you can maximize his damage without needing his light cone or Bronya. With his speed kept low and all allies at 147 speed or above, you can generate enough SP and more to use your support skills as well as Don Hung optimally. In fact, with Locha, you can even go to 134 speed just because he almost never uses his skill. Basically, just live fast and eat up. If you want to be safe, I recommend 147 speed for 11 turns in 7 cycles to generate skill points, but you can go faster or slower depending on your situation. Like I said before, option 1 is to destroy your supports builds to make Don Hunt stronger, and it's good for free-to-play players. Option 2, though, is just to have a better account. When I was talking with Grim, full credit to him for this, by the way, check out his channel, he mentioned Bronya as a busted support for Don Hung. It seems odd because that's a surefire way to lose a ton of skill points, but if you have Don Hung's signature light cone that gives some energy regen, as well as Bronya, you can speed tune supports to be around 136 speed or higher, Don Hung to be around 135, and Bronya to be at 134. Basically what this does is let you set up for Don Hung and generate skill points, then use Don Hung's zero skill point basic attack to generate another point, burn that point with Bronya's skill right after, then get a Bronya buffed three skill point basic attack. That whole sequence will get you 60 energy for Don Hung, and when combined with his ultimate and his light cone, you'll be able to ult every two times you execute that combo, making you go positive on skill points, while also having a giga buffed Don Hung. This combo is actually pretty crazy if you have access to his light cone and Bronya, and it's definitely worth a shot for higher end content. There's also the giga budget version of this, where you run an energy regen rope instead of using his signature light cone, but generally that damage is going to be pretty low by comparison, and also imagine having energy regen ropes. The Bronya strategy, at least from my testing, didn't end up being stronger than the 147 speed strategy, but both are viable and very strong until we get a support in the game that gives skill points. Also, do keep in mind that testing things depends on content, and either one of these strategies could be exceptional in different content. With all that said about the Bronya strat, building supports with absurdly high speed is a surefire way to get ridiculous damage while also being free to play friendly. Thanks for listening to literally the most dank team section I've ever done, and let's move on to Eidolons because some of you are too down bad and I'm worried. Since you already swiped on Dragon Guy, you should try Dragon D's nut. Eidolons are never worth spending money on in my opinion, but I do want to let you know where the best stopping point is for value if you decide to upgrade your Daniel. E1 is going to increase his damage bonus cap from the stacks he gets on hit, and also doubles the amount of stacks you get per hit. It buffs him a bit overall, but the big thing about it is that he can now reach max damage stacks with only his level 2 enhanced basic attack. You definitely want to avoid the 2 skill basic, but because this Eidolon helps with that and increases his damage overall, it's pretty solid. E2 is Don Hung's stopping point for Dolphins because it's pretty dang strong and you're not going to see much better until E6. After using his ultimate, he actually gets three stacks to use for his enhanced basic instead of two, and gets his action moved forward by 100%, meaning he can attack again with his level three basic attack for free right after ulting. That also means more energy back to him right after ultimate, which is crazy for getting ult sooner and getting more free attacks. E3 is a skill and basic attack level up, which is pretty solid for him, and E4 is also another pretty decent buff, since it lets the crit damage stacks from his skill persist until his next turn. Turn, so it's just more crit damage overall, which is just a damage buff. E5 is an ultimate and talent level up, and E6 is a massive damage increase for Don Hung because it nukes. I, I, I mean, I don't really know what else to say. You know those crazy damage showcases on games like Genshin where players use Bennett, Kazuha, Mona, and then dish out like six bajillion damage? Yeah, that's what this is for. After using
using an ally ultimate not including Don Hung, he gets 20% imaginary resistance penetration for his level 3 basic. It can stack up to 3 times, meaning that his next level 3 basic can have up to 60% imaginary resistance penetration and absolutely demolish enemies. Here's a little chart showing the power increase for Don Hung based on Eidolons, and as you can see, Eidolon 2 is pretty dang good for him. But with that said, if you're debating between going for his Light Cone and his Eidolon 2, the Light Cone is going to cost you a lot less poles to actually get, and it's going to be usable on multiple other destruction characters in the future, as long as they don't scale on something like HP. E2 is great, but I would recommend the Light Cone first, especially for the flexibility of team comp it provides, but it's not my money, so, you know, if you want to get E2, you can. Just know that E2 is actually insane, and it's where you should stop if you're just going for bang for your buck. With all that said, if you do have Blade's Light Cone, you could also just go straight for E2, and have a pretty solid damage increase, but I don't feel that most people have Blades Light Cone. All in all, though it seems like he takes a lot to be able to play effectively, from my testing he does feel pretty free to play friendly in terms of the damage output you get just for building the right teams. If you can invest into both Don Hung and the supports that you want to use with him equally, then you can make Don Hung one of the best damage dealers in the entire game and honestly probably the first instance of power creep on DPS, but you didn't hear that from me. This character is crazy good and as long as you follow the tips in this video, you should be able to get some pretty solid damage out of him as well. Thanks for watching everyone and uh let me know what your fa uh, let me know what the best drink is if I go to like a coffee or tea shop.